Israel would describe its invasion of Lebanon as a calculated risk designed to head off worse trouble in the future. But even the Israelis would admit that no matter how good their intelligence, they can never really be sure of the next move of some of the Arab hardliners. First and foremost among them, Libya's Colonel Muhammad Gaddafi. Gaddafi has been described on occasion as the world's most dangerous man. That's because of all the Middle East leaders he's seen as most prone to resort to war and terrorism. What then does he say about the current crisis? We happened to be in Libya at the time the Israelis made their surprise attack against Yasser Arafat's PLO forces in Lebanon. It was clear that Colonel Gaddafi expected us to carry news of his reaction to the outside world. Colonel, you've been described as many things, a terrorist, as a butcher, I think, <laughs> as a gangster and as a madman. Why are you described in all those ways? In, at the beginning, it is uh, sinister propaganda against me because I support uh, uh, firmly and strongly and permanently the Palestinian resistance. <laughs> Right now, he's obsessed with the Lebanon. His call for an Arab summit has been largely ignored. So where does that leave Gaddafi, who sees himself as the one leader who can unite the Arab world against Israel? Is it possible that the PLO will be wiped out in Lebanon by the time there is an Arab summit? No. No, it is not possible. It is not easy for Israeli troops to do this, or any other force. Do you view this situation as critical? Is the PLO itself in Lebanon in a critical position? I don't think so. How is that? Because uh, they are steadfasting uh, and uh, the casualties is uh, not heavy, but uh, it is. Uh, it is uh, the, the position now is against the uh, Israel's troops. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, so you think that the balance of power is in favor of the PLO at the moment and not in, not in favor of the Israelis? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, the longer the uh, war continues, the more it is in the interests of the Palestinians. For many years, Gaddafi has been an ardent supporter of the Palestinians in Lebanon. But now, in spite of offering Libyan troops to fight there, he's pessimistic about a long-term solution. It is too late. We did our best to solve this problem for one or two years ago. But now it is difficult to speak about any solution. We must uh, how do you consider, uh, concentrate. Huh? Concentrate. 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 Concentrate our forces to achieve uh, uh, immediate withdrawal of Israeli troops from all the territories of uh, Lebanon. It, it is said that the Israelis were able to strike at this time with some success because the Arab world itself was in great conflict. Yes, it is true. Yet in all your attempts to achieve Arab unity, you failed. Uh, I may fail uh, on the uh, official level with the governments, but uh, the struggle uh, for the Arab unity and uh, uh, for the revolution, uh, I didn't uh, fail. Uh, we will succeed. Is the Ayatollah Khomeini the leader closest in thinking to you? <laughs> and how we are against uh, reaction, against Zionism, against uh, colonization, uh, against the uh, USA. Uh, both of us are supporting uh, the cause of uh, freedom. Uh, the Palestinian cause, and uh, it is uh, enough to uh, to be together. We are saying revolution until victory, not until death. And what of PLO and, uh, leader uh, Yasser Arafat? What would Gaddafi's advice to him be now? To resign. Why? 
because he failed uh, to unify the uh, Palestinian frontiers and failed also to protect the existence of uh, Palestinians in uh, Lebanon. Uh, and he couldn't uh, solve the problems between uh, his people and uh, the Lebanon as a, as, a, as a state. And yet Yasser Arafat might say to you today, I didn't get any help from anyone. For instance, if he said today, how many troops will Colonel Gaddafi send me? What, no, how many troops would you no, send me? It is not a matter of troops, no. Do you think Yasser Arafat might think that it's a matter of troops? Yes, it is not a matter of troops. It is a matter of policy. Will policy help him to get out of the condition that he's in and the PLO is in now? They are banked into a corner of West no, Berlin. No. Yes. No, the policy and the force, both of them are necessary. Would, would you be prepared to help with the force? We are ready if he, if he wants. If Yasser Arafat said to you now, we need Libyan forces, how many troops would you send him? We can send as um, more as he wants, but uh, it uh, depends on uh, the political circumstances in the area. Uh, we must consider uh, Syria and uh, Lebanon. It is not easy to be there. Can you give me an idea of what sorts of numbers of men you might send? As I, I told, uh, as more as he wants. How much does that mean? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000? <laughs> you can't say no. It is impossible we to say. We can't speak about now. numbers now, but we speak uh, about a principle. About a principle? Yes. He likes to call himself the leader of the revolution, and this is just the sort of attention that Gaddafi relishes. While he may not have an image problem here at home in Libya, in the West, Gaddafi is seen as the world's number one terrorist. But here at this Tripoli conference against Zionism, imperialism and racism, that image is seen as a plus. For Gaddafi, there's only one option if the Americans move back into the Gulf of Sirte. It will be very serious, not for Libya and America, for the beast in the Mediterranean and the, beast in the international beast as a whole. What would be your reaction, Libya's reaction, if the Americans did move back? The war, of course. There would be war? Yes. Between Libya and the United and the, States? Yes, of course. Would you expect the support of your Arab brothers if that war happened? Our brothers and our friends. When, uh, when we uh, fight against the sober power, of course, another sober power will be involved in this uh, dispute. You wouldn't be sorry to see Gaddafi fall, would you? Well, I would think that uh, diplomacy would have me not answer that question. <laughs> How would you regard Ronald Reagan? He's not qualified to be president for this uh, sober power. And uh, he's uh, ignorant, but uh, recently, gradually, he, he, uh, he taught himself and he, he, he understands uh, now the international policy. And he's better than uh, first. You think that Ronald Reagan is improving as a president? Yes, he's improving himself. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.